Street Fighter 2! The Final Challengers! Hey guys, Dave here, and Street Fighter 2 is back on Nintendo Switch. After hearing that Ultra Street Fighter 2 was coming to Nintendo's console, I couldn't wait. I'm a huge fan of the series, and to have another opportunity to play Street Fighter again, yep, I'll take it. Now, the game itself isn't actually bad. I mean, it's Street Fighter 2 with HD visuals and some other balance tweaks and additional modes. But I guess the issue here is that this is essentially a conversion of the Super Street Fighter 2 HD remix from 2008 an old Xbox 360 Xbox Live arcade game, ported to Switch and then sold at £35. Yeah, you know when the original cost £14.99 back in 2008, that's a considerable bit of price gouging there from the publishers, not great. So what exactly are we looking at? Well this is not a straight port of HD Remix of sorts, it's kind of a, a reworking of that game that is a bit more faithful to the original Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. There's lots of modes here, you've got the arcade mode, there's a versus mode where you can have player versus player, player versus CPU, CPU versus CPU, and there's even a buddy battle which is the old dramatic battle mode from Street Fighter Alpha. And the other thing I like is that the game has a proper intro sequence, proper title screen and even a rolling demo. I mean, you know, Street Fighter V didn't have any of those. So on the one hand, Capcom have put a decent level of effort in terms of producing the arcade experience, but on the other hand, we're looking at a port of a near 10 year old game here, and not all aspects of the title are actually better than HD Remix, even though some are. So let's get to it. The game does run natively in 1080p, all the artwork has been drawn to this particular resolution, although it's worth mentioning that the original art was drawn for 1080p at full 3 aspect ratio, uh, which was possible in the original HD remix, you could switch between HD visuals at 16x9 which was zoomed in so you had scaled character sprites, or having the visuals at 4 3 so the sprites would be 1 to 1 pixel mapped and everything would appear at the correct size so you weren't looking at a zoomed in image. On the Switch version though that's not possible, so if you choose HD graphics you're permanently in widescreen, permanently zoomed in, which it's not a deal breaker but it's disappointing that we can't change aspect ratios for the HD visuals when you could in the old game. But on the plus side the character sprites have been adjusted for the Switch release so that they display correctly at the 16x9 aspect ratio without any of the obvious edge artifacts that are present on the 360 HD remix. This means that the 4.3 mode isn't really essential on Switch, although it would be nice to have. Then there's also the classic graphics. Now in HD Remix the classic graphics were a bit disappointing, you could have the old character sprites but with new backgrounds and new HUDs, yeah, not great, but on Switch you have the option to have full classic graphics, well, almost. You get characters, backgrounds, all the sprite work is all of the old game, however the HUD, that's the new game. So it's not perfect, but that aspect is better than the HD Remix. So just looking at the two here, you look at the character sprites and the backgrounds and yeah the same assets have been ripped from the 2008 HD remix, kind of reworked into this ultra version on the Switch. So same animations, same resolution artwork, it's basically almost exactly identical. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, while I'm not a huge fan of this particular artwork displayed on a HD TV as it looks a bit too comic book like, when you play it on the Switch's small screen the artwork does appear a little closer to that of, you know, hand drawn sprites. Obviously it's not an exact match, but it looks really nice on the small Switch screen. Playing the game on Switch in portable mode though is a lot more difficult than it needs to be. Essentially the Joy-Cons don't feature a proper D-pad, the directions are made up of individual buttons, and while it is possible to pull off special moves and supers, it's rather difficult and literally kills your thumb after just a few minutes of play, which is not ideal. I suppose you could always use the analog sticks here, but this isn't really a great substitute for a good D-pad. So in order to get the best experience, you're going to have to pony up for the Pro Controller and ideally play in docked mode. The other thing that's changed here is the character portraits, the versus screen and the character select screen. 
these were all completely redone in HD Remix with new portraits which weren't very faithful at all to the original game whereas here Capcom have kind of redrawn new artwork over the old sprite work and yeah this actually is very faithful to the original release uh, to the point where that some of the background art and the new character sprites actually look a bit out of place here. There are also a few other changes as well but not necessarily for the better. So for example the clouds on Ryu stage here actually move across the screen in the arcade original and in HD Remix but on the Ultra version they're completely static. And likewise, Ken's boat in the background bobs up and down in the HD Remix and Arcade original games. It doesn't move on the Switch. And to be honest, I'm kind of disappointed with this because it's just one of those basic details that should have been there. And it is there if you switch to classic graphics, which makes it all the more noticeable when you go back to the HD visuals. There are some other differences as well, so the floor on Guile stage for example features the original arcade style artwork, whereas Zangief stage no longer has the hammer and sickle styling on the floor. On the flip side though, a positive aspect is that the HUDs, the health bars and character portraits are more like the original game now during gameplay, which is a good thing, it definitely feels more like Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo in that respect. Also, as you'd expect for a remaster of sorts, the audio has also been reworked. Here we get a choice of having brand new music and all new sound effects and voices, or of course we can choose the classic mode, which gives us access to the original music and sound effects. Now to be honest here, I'm not particularly keen on the brand new audio released for this version. Punch and kicks generally lack impact, and the new voice acting, well, doesn't sound like Street Fighter 2. So, have a listen. Round one, fight! Hadouken! Hadouken! Shoryuken! Fire! Shoryuken! 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 So I think most fans will agree that the old sound effects and voices are the better choice here. The annoying thing is that if you choose the classic sounds you get classic sounds and music and if you choose the new sounds you get new sounds and music, there's no option to mix and match here. Also you're stuck with the brand new announcer for things like round one fight and Ryu wins. Yeah again, not great. This kind of mixture of styles, both in terms of graphics and audio, does lead to something of a mishmash of sorts. I don't mind the fact that Capcom are using the HD remix as the base of this particular game, but I feel that you know what we're looking at here is that certain features have been implemented quite well, others are only really like half done. I mean this is billed as the ultra final challenges version of Street Fighter 2, but it doesn't feel like the awesome final send off we should be getting for such a classic game. Ok so with Ultra Street Fighter 2 we could not check out the Way of the Hado mode, an exclusive new mini game kind of option of sorts which uses the Joy-Con motion controls and with artwork that looks to be repurposed or reworked from Street Fighter 5 and Street Fighter 4. Yep, so it's basically first person and you use the Joy-Cons to physically throw out fireballs, dragon punches and hurricane kicks against waves of mindless bison enemies. I'm not really sure who asked for this but Capcom thought it would be a cool extra to add. And while I do feel that it could have been a kind of interesting distraction of sorts, the implementation here just isn't very good at all. The motion controls themselves just don't work. They're pretty unresponsive so pulling off fireballs, dragon punches is really difficult to do and the whole gameplay experience is just plain simply inconsistent. This part of the game is also running natively at 1080p resolution, although there's no anti-aliasing here. This gives us a rather sharp image, though one that is somewhat unrefined, especially when viewed on large HD TVs. We're also looking at a 60fps target frame rate as well. Frame rate isn't perfect here, so there are lots of small dips just below and a few larger ones when there are a couple of enemies on screen. But ultimately when this experience adds nothing of any real value to the package, does it really matter? 
I suspect that hardcore Street Fighter fans are going to play this once and never touch it again and for casual gamers it's just too infuriating with regards to the unresponsive controls to even make it an enjoyable diversion. So yeah, anyway, that's Ultra Street Fighter 2 on the Switch. Is it a bad game? No, I actually think that in terms of the content itself, it's actually very good. I mean, Street Fighter 2 plays well, it's responsive. The art style isn't going to be to everyone's taste, I'm not too keen, but again, you know, that's a subjective thing. The real issue is, of course, the price. At £14.99 or even £20 at a stretch, I think this would have been you know, a good little release for the Nintendo Switch as a DLC download based title, but as a £35 full retail price, uh, it just doesn't make sense. So yeah, unless it drops in price massively, I think it's going to be one to avoid, which is a shame because when playing on the actual handheld, it's a pretty cool little HD port of Street Fighter 2 to have. Anyway, with that said, I think I'll leave it there. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, as ever, don't forget to like or subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.